Seven, verses 28 up to 57. To align the words of people on the earth, we'd like to suggest the three questions. Number one, in verse 35, Jesus wept. Why did Jesus probably weep before the people in this context? Question two, in verse 44, and he who had died came out, bound hand and foot with the grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Loose him and let him go. What did Jesus approve of in what Jesus said? Question three in verse 50. Nor do you consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people, and not that the whole nation should perish. What does it mean at the point of Caiaphas the speaker, and what does it mean at the point of prophecy, as John recorded? In the last time after the death, Lazarus, in verses 25 up to 27, Jesus said to her, or Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life, which meaning Jesus is going to raise Lazarus from his death into life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live, indicating Lazarus believed in Jesus as the Christ, the Son of God, but he was dead, he shall live. Verse 26, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Here, never die means never spiritual death which is a human consciousness separated from God. Do you believe this? Martha said to Jesus, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, or the Messiah, the Son of God, who is come into the world. Here, Martha's non-responsive answer. She believes that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, but does not believe in specific that Jesus is the resurrection and the life until the dead Lazarus is raised into life in verses 43 up to 45. Verse 28, And when she had said this thing, Martha, Martha is doing rather than being. Luke chapter 10, verse 39, 42. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she approached Jesus and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister Mary has left me to serve alone. Therefore, tell her to help me. But Jesus answered and said to Martha, 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 you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. Good part is a relationship, personal relationship, with the Lord. So Mary, she went to her way and secretly called Mary her sister. Mary is a worshiper. So she focused on being rather than doing. So intimate relationship or fellowship with the Lord first. Its effect, its results or consequences are doing serving to the Lord. So, John chapter 12, verse 3, next chapter, the Mary made an offering. 
Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil and spiked it. That's the value one year salary of blue collar laborers at that time. Anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. So Mary made the offer the costly oil of a spikenard to Jesus from her worshiping the Lord, her relationship with the Lord, her fellowship with the Lord. Also, Matthew chapter six, verse uh, uh, chapter six, verse twenty-one. Luke chapter 12, verse 34. For where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. So marriage a treasure with the Lord Jesus Christ, so her heart will be there too. Seeing the teacher or the master had come and is calling for you. Verse 29. As soon as she heard that, she arose, Mary arose quickly and came to Jesus. Mary heard Jesus calling for her through Martha. Verse 30. Now Jesus had not yet come into the town of Bethany yet, but was in the place where Martha met him. Verse 31. Then the Jews who were with her in the house and comforting her when they saw that Mary rose up quickly and went out, followed her, saying, She's going to the tomb to weep there, to the Lazarus tomb to weep or a tear there. Verse 32 Then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, water worshiper. We should first have a worshiping heart, resulting in services or works. Saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Because you were not here just before Lazarus' death, you missed the healing time, and now Lazarus was dead for four days. This word is the same as Martha's word in verse 21. It shows her little face over Jesus is the resurrection and the life in verse 25. Verse 33, therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her weeping, which means the Jews were also weeping, then Jesus groaned in the spirit. Groaned, the Greek word means Jesus was filled with indignation in the spirit and was troubled because of their little face over Jesus, the resurrection and the life, and death, grief, sorrow, pain, or suffering as the result of the original sin of Adam. Verse 34, And Jesus said, Where have you laid him? They said to Jesus, Lord, come and see. Then verse 35, Jesus wept. Why did Jesus weep in this context? Jesus had the love for the people who had their little faith and death, grief, sorrow, pain, or suffering as the result of the original sin of Adam. Verse 36, Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. How Jesus loved Lazarus, so the Jewish people 
recognize Jesus' love. Verse 37. And some of them said, Could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Expression of little faith of Jesus is the resurrection and the life in verse 25. Then verse 38, then Jesus again groaning in himself. So Jesus, he groaned, 33 groaned. Groaned is the meaning filled with indignation. Came to the tomb, it was a cave and a stone lay against it. So at that time, many bodies were put in one tomb, whose entrance was shut up with a large stone. Verse 39, Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to Jesus, Lord, by this time, there is a stench, another word, stink. Because in Israel, even today, the day a person dies, the body is buried without embalming. For he has been dead four days. So Lazarus' body was decomposed. Verse 40. Jesus said to Martha, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? So which means, if you believe, I am the resurrection and the life, in verse 25, you would see the resurrection of Lazarus and his life, which is to glorify God that the Son of God may be glorified through it. In verse 4, above, verse 41, Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man Lazarus was lying, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Verse 42, And I know that you always hear me, but because of the people who are standing by or the eyewitnesses, the Jews, Martha, Mary, and his disciples, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. That is, you are the Christ, the Son of God, who sent, in verse 27, by the resurrection of Lazarus and his life, not in a veget, veget, uh, vegetative state. Vegetative state. Verse 43. Now when Jesus had said this thing, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Lazarus come forth. Even death, or what the power of death, is a subject to Jesus. Verse 44. And he who had died came out, bound the hand and foot with the grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth or a napkin. Jesus said to them, Loose him and let him go. Lazarus was resurrected. So he lives his life. So this proves that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. For example, Jesus himself resurrection on Easter day, and Jairus' daughter also was resurrected from her death. Also another, uh, the resurrection work, widows sold some in nine city. Mark chapter 5, verse 41, 42, talk about Jairus' daughter case. Then Jesus took the child by the hand and said to her, Talita Kumai, which is translated, little girl, I say to you, arise, 
Immediately, the girl arose from the dead and worked, for she was 12 years of age, and they were overcome with great amazement. Also, the sole son of a widow, Luke chapter 7, verses 14, 15, then Jesus came, touched the open coffin, and those who carried him stood still. And Jesus said, Young man, I say to you, arise. So he was dead, sat up, and began to speak. And Jesus presented him to his mother widow. Then verse 45, Then many of the Jews who had come to Mary and had seen the things Jesus did, believed in him as Christ, the Son of God. But, here contrast, some of them did not believe, rather than went away to the Pharisees and told them the things Jesus did. But some did not believe in him, despite the miracle and reported Jesus resurrecting Lazarus to Pharisees. Those who do not believe in him unless God changes their hearts. Romans chapter 8 verses 29, 30. God called the people, so unless God calls them, they would not repent their uh, unbelief and believe uh, Jesus as the Christ, the Son of God, even if they saw the miraculous Jesus work to resurrect the dead Lazarus into life. So Romans chapter 8, verses 29, 30, for whom he foreknew, God foreknew, God also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called, whom he called, these he also justified, and whom he justified, these he also glorified. So God changed the human heart you would not believe. Also, the Holy Spirit make you understand. Unless the Holy Spirit make you understand the Word of God, you could not understand God's Word either. So here, so some of them also, they saw Jesus resurrected the, the dead Lazarus into life, but they did not believe in Jesus as a Christ, the Son of God, rather than, so they reported to the Pharisees. Then verse 47, Then the chief priests and the Pharisees, that time is two chief priests, one is Caiaphas, the other one Annas. Annas uh, is uh, the father-in-law of Caiaphas. The chief priests and the Pharisees gathered a council. Here, council, the Sanhedrin council, the high class of Israel, and said, what shall we do? For this man works many signs or many miracles. Verse 48, if we let him alone like this, everyone will believe in him. So which meaning everyone will become Christians rather than Judaists. And the Romans will come and take away both our place and nation. So here the rulers, the Roman government will come and take away both the high priest position uh, and Positions uh, such as uh, profiteering, finance, matter, power, and fame, and nation. The nation based upon the Judaism. So, for example, 
Christianity over Diana, Goddess, Book of Acts, chapter 19, verses 24 up 27, disciples preached the gospel. So many people become Christians, so Diana uh, worshipers, or Diana uh, the workers uh, feel uh, is uh, interrupted here. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, who made a silver shrine of Diana, brought a no small profit to the craftsmen. He called them together with the workers of a similar occupation and said, Man, you know that we have our prosperity or our profits by this trade. Moreover, you see and hear that not only at Ephesus, but throughout almost all Asia, this Paul, disciple, has persuaded and turned away many people saying that they are not gods which are made with hands. So not only is this trade of our hours in danger of falling into disrepute, but also the temple of the great goddess. So they would lose their uh, reputation as well. Diana may be despised and her magnificent Christians destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worship. So basically, same region here. So let Jesus' uh, ministry uh, uh, allow continually, which meaning everyone will believe in him, which meaning everyone will become Christians. So from the most Judaist, the Judaism, so therefore, the Roman government, ruling government, will not allow, take away their position over high position of a Sanhedrin court, Sanhedrin council, based upon Judaism on the Old Testament. Actually, Pharisees plus their own tradition as well. So, and the nation, the nation based upon uh, Judaism will be taken away then might have took over, uh, taken over by Christianity. Verse 49, And one of them, Caiaphas, with Annas, his father-in-law, so Luke chapter 3, verse 2, indicate right there, while Annas and Cai uh, Caiaphas were the high priests, the word of God came to John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. Also, John chapter 18, verse 13, and they led Jesus away to Annas first, for he was the father or a father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was a high priest that year. Basically, Caiaphas appointed by Roman government, young guy, so more uh, the favorable to Roman government. So Annas is an older guy. Annas uh, is uh, a the descendant of Aaron in the Old Testament rule. So that way, two uh, high priests. But here, Caiaphas. Caiaphas said to them, you know nothing at all. They don't know at all, but, verse 50, nor do you consider that it is expedient for us, which means it is hasty to kill Jesus for themselves, for their profit, their place, or their positions, and the nation based upon the Judaism, not upon Christianity. So there is a selfish political motive that one man should die for the people and not that whole nation should perish. So this point over Caiaphas, it doesn't mean Jesus as one man should die for the Jews, or Jesus as one man should be killed for the Jewish people, not the nation of Israel based upon Judaism, should perish at the point of Caiaphas. Then verses 51, 52, 
the John D. Ogden recorded this is actually prophecy. Now this he did not say on his own authority, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the nation because Caiaphas was allowed by God. So Caiaphas uttered the prophecy about Jesus' death for the nation, not even realizing it. Verse 52, not for that nation only, but also that Jesus would gather together in one children of God who were scattered abroad, which means globally. So not just for the nation of Israel, but for all people whose believers are the children of God. Then verse 53, Then from that day on, they plotted to put him to death. In other words, they plotted to kill Jesus. So they, meaning high priests and Pharisees, Verse 54, Therefore Jesus no longer walked openly among the Jews. Jesus stopped his public ministry on the earth, but went from there into the country near the wilderness to a city called Ephraim, and there remained with his disciples. So Jesus stopped his public ministry and took his disciples away from Jerusalem to Ephraim, and there he waits before the Passover when Jesus comes back to Jerusalem for his crucifixion for the world, for every people. Verse 55, And the Passover of the Jews was near, and many went from the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Purification ritual required before participating in the temple on the feast days. Verse 56, Then they sought Jesus and spoke among themselves as they stood in the temple. What do you think? That Jesus will not come to the feast they are curious of Jesus' participation on the Passover. Then last verse 57, Now both the chief priests, here plural, Annas and Caiaphas, and the Pharisees had given a commandment that if anyone knew where he was, he should report it that they might see the Jesus. So the chief priest and the Pharisees ordered the people to report where Jesus is and would seize him. Let's see each question in brief. Question 1 in verse 35, Jesus wept. Why did Jesus probably weep before the people's weeping in this context? Probably Jesus wept. Because number one is a people's death, a sorrow, grief, all coming from the original sin of Adam. That's the first reason. Second one is in that context, they have a little faith of Jesus, the resurrection and the life in this context. Question two, in verse 44, and he who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Lose him and let him go. What did Jesus prove up in what Jesus said? Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. This one proved up Jesus' resurrection because Jesus raised Lazarus from his death and the life, because the Lazarus can live his life, not vegetation state over there. So that in a full in this context. Question three in verse fifty. 
nor do you consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and not that the whole nation should perish. What does it mean at the point of Caiaphas to speak? Caiaphas to speak of motive, selfish, political motive. This one, Jesus is killed better than to save their position and the nation of Israel based upon Judaism. But what does it mean at the point of prophecy as John recorded? Which meaning God allowed Caiaphas to say this word because Jesus was dead for the people, not only the people of Israel, but also all people who the believers become the children of God. Let's just sing song all together uh, on bulletin. Please note this online word for global crusade in effect develops from sermon into spiritual transformation into the image of Christ in daily fellowship with the Lord throughout Bible study and discipleship. We think that any human opinion is not really important rather than what God says. So the best commentary on the Bible is the Bible per se. But the opinions to make us understand God's word have been accepted in light of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Thank you, everybody. Come to Jesus. Whoever believes in Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior have a daily fellowship with our Lord. 